Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome. I'm Kathleen Joan. I am one of your co-hosts with Aaron Duffy Burke of Resurrecting the Goddess, an online summit at the intersection of the divine feminine and Christianity. And today it is my delight and my honor to be here with Reverend Dr. Jan Aldridge Clanton to discuss divine feminine song. Jan, welcome. It's such a pleasure to have you here. Thank you, Kathleen. Thank you so much. It's such a joy to be here with you. And I appreciate so much what you're doing in resurrecting her. <laughs> Thank you. I, I think her resurrection is, is happening through all of us, right? So mm -hmm. yeah, it's just it's just a joy to be part of this gathering and, and to have you be part of it. Um, yeah, and just to, so to tell everyone a little bit about you, um, Jan Aldridge Clanton is an author, teacher, and ordained minister. She currently serves as co-chair of the National Ecumenical Organization, Equity for Women in the Church. Uh, also co-pastor of the New Wineskins Feminist Ritual Community, ministry partner of The Gathering, which is a womanist church, and an adjunct professor at Richland College in Dallas, Texas. Her work focuses on feminist theology and divine feminine ritual. And I'm going to name just a few, just a few little selection of Jan's many published books. <laughs> so some of these include Inclusive Hymns for Liberation, Peace, and Justice, Earth Transformed with Music, Inclusive Songs for Worship, also Breaking Free, the Story of a Feminist Baptist Minister, I have to read that one, and In Search of the Christ Sophia, an inclusive Christology for liberating Christians. So such a prolific author and songwriter and minister. Um, and Jan, it's just, again, so wonderful to have you. Thank you, Kathleen. Yeah, so to get us started, can you just tell us a little bit more about what draws you to this intersection of Christianity and the goddess, the divine feminine? Yes, uh... When I was ordained uh, a Baptist minister back in 1985, I I didn't think that that was the end of patriarchy, but I thought, wow, you know, I'm just going to advocate for ordination of women in all denominations because it was such a powerful experience. Well, the more I tried to fulfill my pastoral call, the more I realized the deeper patriarchal roots were our image of the divine and our image uh, our images of the divine were masculine it was father master son all of this language and when I was uh finishing my degree at Southwestern Baptist Seminary uh, in my systematic theology class. We were studying all the different doctrines of the Trinity and you know all those. And it just came to me, if God can be three persons, can't God be at least two genders or more and that's more? And so that became uh, a chapter heading in my first book, In Whose Image God and Gender. And I mine scripture for all the female divine images in the Hebrew Bible and the Christian Bible. And they're more than you'd think. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's a minority report because uh, men, for the most part, wrote the Bible. I think maybe women had more, we're finding out from feminist scholars, more to do with it than we thought. Mm -hmm. So uh, the more I wrote and spoke on that, the more I realized that we needed to convert our imaginations as well as our minds. And to get it into our spirits, we needed ritual experience. And that's when I started writing litanies and songs. And my first uh, book of litanies and songs was published by the Catholic Press 23rd publications in Mystic, Connecticut. Oh, wow. And uh, <laughs> the editor was wonderful. You may know something about him, but you know, that was a, a while ago. I think that one came out about 1996. And we joked that here was a feminist Baptist published by a Catholic press. Yeah. And <laughs> so uh, in that, I had uh, the first him I wrote, which was O Come Christ Sophia, full of grace and wisdom. And you know it, it was in the uh, Christmas uh, album that you and uh, Spiral Muse put together. Uh, it was 
it came to me because during the Advent season, I noticed more and more all the masculine images and masculine pronouns, come let us adore him. Let's, and I thought, how would it have been if I'd grown up singing, oh, come let us adore her? But instead of just changing a few words, because people really object to that, I just thought I'm going to rewrite the whole thing. And so it's to a death day fidelis, oh, come all ye faithful, oh, come Christ Sophia, full of grace and wisdom. So from there, it seems like more of the Christmas carols were coming to me. I was writing to old little town of Bethlehem, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, Ancient Wisdom, Mother of All. And I've got that and, and I can play ancient wisdom for you. Okay, yeah. I think I can share this. Okay. Let's see, here we go.
Oh my gosh, thank you, Jan. So well, I believe so much in the power of music, and I know you're a musician, and mm -hmm. you, to implant these words in our minds and then the visual images. And that's why I started putting these to videos and uh, bringing and getting uh, divine feminine images from various artists who gave me permission and mm -hmm. some just out there in public domain. And so I started doing these YouTube uh, videos and I have a YouTube channel, just janaldridgeclanton.com. Mm -hmm. And I I have many, I don't know, 30 or 40 videos now and I'm continuing to make them because I think the words and the visual images and the music, uh, like I grew up singing all of these hymns in the Baptist church. In fact, I really like what they used to call the song service in the Baptist church mm -hmm. more than the preaching or anything else. <laughs> Those words are embedded in my memory to the point that even when I am writing new words to old hymn tunes like mm -hmm. Amazing Grace mm -hmm. for such a wretch as I, you know, that and those old words sometimes supersede the ones yeah. that I have written because it's just so important, the music that we sing and yeah. from children. So I'm hoping this gets to children and I have mm -hmm. uh, written for children too, a children's musical, a children's mm -hmm. song book. Wow. <laughs> Well, yeah, th then thank you for sharing about that. I think the videos, like you said, you know, the images paired with the words is also really powerful um, as a way of reframing our imaginations. And and I, I think to me, like, one of the really powerful things about your music has been, because I've, I've been listening to and singing, you know, your 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 new lyrics to the traditional music, right, um, for many years now. And I think that's one of the important pieces to me is like, I know this music and the music is like it, like the Christmas album, right? Um, your, your, some of your rewritten Christmas hymns, like that's really traditional music that everybody knows and, or most people, right? right? Like it's in our culture. Um, it's in sort of this part of the Christian tradition as, as we have it. Right. And so for that music, it's like, I don't want to let go of that music necessarily, but I love being able to sing it to the goddess. <laughs> right? Yeah. And it's like, yeah. This totally I, I'm trying to reclaim those. And, you know, almost everybody knows the uh, Christmas carols, whatever mm -hmm. faith tradition they are. So I've written to most of those. But also I found that so many people of various traditions. And when I first started writing uh, new lyrics, I got... Uh, Catholic hymn book, Lutheran, Methodist, all these hymn books, and tried to get uh, tunes in common, like hymn to joy, oh, joyful, yeah. joyful, and, and so I've written to that, but uh, then uh, my latest uh, published songbook is uh, Inclusive Songs from the Heart of Gospel, and I've reclaimed some of the what we now call the bloody hymns, and you probably don't know them, but there were some that were just scared me when I was a child, gave me nightmares. There's a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. I, I know, and so I wrote that, and one is there's power in the blood, and I changed that. There's power in us all, mm -hmm. and so that is specifically for people in those evangelical traditions, but what I found is that people in other traditions too really appreciate them whether they know the tunes or not the tunes are kind of peppy really mm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know they're good <laughs> tunes <laughs> and, <laughs> and then we wow. did um uh well i i collaborated with young woman Mackenzie brown in uh new wineskin she contributed a few and she did one to will a circle be unbroken and so there's some of those gospel tunes that are out there in the you know, public sphere too. So, oh my gosh. Well, um, how do you think it affects people, Jen, when they have these sort of traditional music that they know, but all of a sudden the lyrics are inclusive or divine feminine oriented? Like, what do you think is the effect on us? Okay, I'm going to play an example yeah. and give you uh, this. I played at Christian Feminism today, and there were people not just coming up and saying that's great, but just tears streaming down their faces. So this is uh, 
And this is an example of uh, a group that I've collaborated with, Pullen Memorial Baptist Church in Raleigh, North Carolina. Larry Schultz is a composer. And so he composed some of them and then he directed a choir and we made a CD and this was one on the CD that I put visuals to midwife divine now calling and you'll know it it's mm -hmm. oh how rose air blooming mm -hmm. let's see Sorry, wrong one. There we go. There we go. <laughs> You know, I, I've heard the those words, and I've sung that song of yours before, but to hear a church choir performing it in a church setting <laughs> is so powerful, right? I mean, what if all of our Christian liturgies included songs to the divine midwife? <laughs> yeah, well, uh, and there's something that... Uh, happens within me when I put them to the pictures too and so uh mm. I, that's really one of the most fun things that I have done and 
continue to do. Uh, recently, I've collaborated with Katie Ketchum, who is Minister of Music at Ebenezer, her church, Lutheran, that you know, and where you uh, and Spiral Muse did a lot of music leading. And uh, she is a composer, and she composed all these tunes. And the way we worked, you mentioned something about the way I work. Uh, with her, it was a different kind of process because I didn't have a a tune with a set meter and oh, rhyme right, that I was right. working toward. Uh, sometimes she would send me a tune and I'd work with that. Sometimes I would send her words and she would put a tune to it. And then also she sent me some uh, uh, traditional goddess tunes. Uh, and I wrote to some of those too. Uh, we're in touch with the healing the rising of the moon, uh, various ones. So uh, can I illustrate, uh, actually, this is a combination of uh, wisdom. Sophia is rising everywhere and she will rise that uh, Stacy Bourne, Pastor Stacy Bourne wrote for one of the uh, festivals, her f festivals. Mm -hmm. But uh, this is my hope and prayer and I'm seeing this happen that she is rising everywhere so I, I will share mm -hmm. that uh, yeah. Wisdom Sophia is rising everywhere. Feel her loving care. Wisdom Sophia is calling us today. Take her peaceful way. Wisdom Sophia is longing to be my heart she will rise she will rise she will rise in my heart she will rise she will rise she will rise in my heart she will rise she will rise in the world she will rise she will rise she will rise in the world she will rise she will rise Justice, she will rise, she will rise, she will rise. In justice, she will rise, she will rise. She will rise. In justice, she will rise, she will rise. In my heart, she will rise, she will rise, she will rise. In my heart, she will rise, she will rise. Wow. And those visuals, like you were saying, really add so much too. I mean, the music is so singable, right? And I'm, I'm like sitting there, like in my heart, she, I want to sing it. Yeah. <laughs> and then the, uh, it's, you've done such an amazing job of putting real life, like visual sort of real life photos of what that looks like in the world of, you know, these examples of 
of her, <laughs> people embodying her. Uh, uh, thank you. And I hope that, uh, you know, these videos get out there too. Uh, mm -hmm. During the pandemic, it was so helpful in new wineskin. In fact, we're still meeting on Zoom because we had so many people from across the country come. And so uh, we could use those because on Zoom, it's hard to sing in groups because it's all sync. I hate that because I love group <laughs> congregational singing, but, and sometimes we do it anyway, but uh, it was it was good to have those mm -hmm. videos. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, her say, uh, Songs for Healing and Empowerment, was published right before the pandemic. And so uh, her church has used them some, too. And, of course, they use those songs uh, a lot now. And, uh, and discovering a lot of other uh, groups and congregations using them. So... <laughs> That was a lot of fun to put together, her say. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Well, I'm just wondering about like the creative process with this, you know, like you said, sometimes you get the music from someone else and then the lyrics come or sometimes the lyrics are first or can you just tell us a little bit about that flow, like how some of that works? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, and I do believe in flow. And I believe, uh, and I don't know whether it's true of other artists, and you can tell me you're a creative artist, if once you start something, it comes, sometimes I might start with something trite, but if I get into it, it flows. And that's been the case with uh, other kind of writing that I've done, but even more so with song lyrics. Mm -hmm. And the good thing about it, I can write them at, you know, I would be walking outside. I've got a beautiful neighborhood with a lot of trees and song lyrics come. Uh, driving to Baylor when I was a full-time chaplain. And lyrics can come anywhere in the middle of the night. Sometimes they yeah. come. The yeah. only problem is that uh, I have kind of an obsessive mind. And and that's, that's a benefit and... Uh, <laughs> A disadvantage uh, to my sleep, but when uh, it's an advantage because I get one of these tunes in my mind and I can't let it go. Maybe you've had a tune before, and so I'm writing, and so maybe in the middle of the night I'm working on a line or a phrase and can't go to sleep, but uh, it seems like in the last few years that the flow has just come more easily, more quickly. Uh, and I do believe that Sophia, uh, she's my main uh, guide, goddess, whatever, uh, Christ Sophia. She's from the Christian tradition too, and in other traditions. And so that's what I really appreciate about Sophia. She's wisdom. And I believe that I'm partners you know, I certainly have to work out rhythms and rhymes, but it's a partnership, a co-creation that she gives me ideas. She gives me tunes and says, you know, write to this, uh, uh, themes, uh, mm -hmm. uh, biblical passages that I use or phrases uh, in the Psalms or Proverbs or so uh as you can tell, I really love the creative process of writing mm -hmm. song mm -hmm. lyrics. Oh my gosh. I just imagine this being so transformative. I mean, it was transformative for me, right? And and I just know how transformative it can be for people who are used to singing, like people who go to Christian services, they're used to all of the language there. And then what if the what if it could be more open? What if it could be more inclusive and and just what happens in us as Sophia, like like you said, she draws us into new ways of expressing things and, and more inclusive imagination around that, right? Yeah. The, the first time uh, I went to her church in San Francisco, uh, not sure whether you were with Spiral Muse then. I think so. I gave uh, what they... Uh, is called then a key keynote addresses, two or three. And one of them was uh, my story from my book, uh, my autobiography, Breaking Free, Story of a Baptist Feminist Minister. 
uh, but they sang the my first hymn book, uh, Inclusive Hymns for Liberating Christians, had come out, and uh, Pastor Stacy had gotten copies for every participant, and they were singing, and I remember people then just singing with the expressions on their face and maybe tears flowing out and thinking, this is what I'm supposed to be doing because it really makes a difference mm -hmm. for people to have these tunes reclaimed. A lot of them were uh, standard Lutheran uh, hymns, and a lot of the people in that church had a Lutheran background, and, yeah. and the church is still Lutheran. Right. <laughs> they haven't been thrown out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Even though definitely affirmative action for the divine feminine, that's yeah. the mission. Yes. Oh, my gosh. It just reminds, it just, like, brings up for me how, you know, sometimes we think, okay, Christianity, like, that means it's it's this, it's within this box, it's these words, it's these rituals, it's the way that, you know, this is the way it has to be. And actually, the Divine Feminine, like you said, she is present within the Christian tradition. She always has been, even if she hasn't been noticed or named as much. And so, you know, like, people don't have to pick either or. Like, we can, we can have her and, you know, for those who come from Christian roots and backgrounds, like, we can do that. We can have have her within our tradition, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right, and 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 that's uh, I think a good thing too because it helps us to stay rooted. Uh, mm -hmm. And in fact, uh, I think one of the uh, reviews of uh, that uh, praying with Christ Sophia that I mentioned it had. Uh, liturgies, uh, songs, some of my uh, first songs, uh, the review said that uh, she really, and she was a Catholic teacher, her sister, and uh, the tunes helped to root us. And uh, so I found also that congregations will often accept new words to familiar tunes because there's something familiar oh, like right. the Pullen Memorial Baptist Church mm -hmm. in Raleigh. Uh, they sing a lot of my new lyrics to mm -hmm. traditional tunes. Yeah. Oh my gosh. What a powerful, transformative yet familiar, right? I, th I think that's really important what you mentioned about like, okay, there's something familiar here. It feels like ours. It feels like what we know because it's the music. And yet we can we can bring in some some new air <laughs> here with yeah. these new words, you know. Yeah. Well, Jane, do you have one more song you want to share with us? It's what? Would you like to share one more song? Uh, actually, I have a few more if we have time. I think we may have time. Okay. Let's okay. See, uh... Let's see. Okay, this is one of the first that I took to our new wineskins feminist ritual community. We sound a call to freedom that will heal a broken land As the call rings out more clearly, violent forces will disband Prison doors will open, bonds will loosen by the Spirit's hand The truth will set us free Free at last, oh hallelujah last 
Christ, oh hallelujah. Now, Sophia, you have freed us. Your truth has set us free. Our recovery is coming as our eyes receive new sight. We are moving out of bondage. We are bound for freedom bright. As we claim our fullest powers, we walk on into the light. The truth will set us free. Free at last, oh hallelujah. Free. Sophia, you have freed us. Your truth has set us free. Now our joy breaks forth in dawning of a free and glorious day. And our healing springs up quickly as our talents we display. Come and join our celebration. Come. That was the first uh, song video I did before I started putting the words on the yeah. screen. Yeah, I realized that that's affected. Right. Also, right. I wanted to illustrate another artist that I have collaborated with, Shannon Kincaid. She's a Dallas, uh, actually vocal and visual artist, and I've used some of her uh, paintings in some of my videos, too. So that's been a joy. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I have, uh, if we have time, uh, two more examples of groups I've collaborated with. Okay, uh, you mentioned uh, that I was a ministry partner of the Gathering, a womanist church. Mm -hmm. That has been a transformative experience for me. Uh, two uh, pastors, co-pastors, Black women, and to hear Black women preach uh, actually meeting on Saturday evening, Saturday after, and the Minister of Music uh, is a wonderful, they, uh, Deshay, uh, and so I'm going to play uh, one that he's done, uh, they have done, and also this illustrates how some traditional tunes, this is a traditional gospel uh Black gospel, Wait in the Water, how uh, he transforms it with the uh, the way he sings it. And I tried to, with the words, to do this. Mm -hmm. And then the last one is gratifying to me because a group that I'm a part of, Baptist Women in Ministry, I'm now Alliance of Baptist, uh, which is one of the most progressive and Baptist Women in Ministry has mostly progressive groups, but trying to reach out to those oppressed Southern Baptist women. But this was at the annual conference last year, and they sang one of my hymns. So I'm going to play that one, too.
Applaud. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, Shay Jackson, I think, just does a wonderful job Incredible. with that. Uh, uh, they're so talented. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the one from uh, Baptist Women in Ministry Annual Meeting.
Did I have the sound on with that mm -hmm. one? You could hear the sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, right at the end, of, what was so gratifying to me was to see this big congregation in a Baptist church singing Christ Sophia. And toward the end, in the back, uh, I was there with my grandson, 16-year-old grandson, my son, and my husband. And it was just so, so gratifying. So, I, you know, and I was so grateful for them for coming and affirming my work. Oh, my gosh. Well, she's speaking through you, Jan, and through all of these different musicians. I mean, I love how you've shown us so many different examples of musical styles that are widely different <laughs> from one another. Right. Um, but all of these different musical artists and styles have all embraced your words because they're they're speaking truth. They're speaking, you know, the truth of Christ, Sophia. Well, that's what I believe, Kathleen, and you're doing it too. We have to get her out there in as many ways as possible, mm -hmm. many different styles, many different uh, artistic uh, media. Mm -hmm. uh, what you're doing, this summit, uh, is so important because there's a ripple effect. You know, the more we get her out, mm -hmm. the more she's rising mm -hmm. everywhere. Yeah. I got an email just a couple of days ago from a minister in a church in Scotland asking if he could use one of my hymns in one of their worship resources. So, oh. you know, that was yes gratifying. So uh, anyway, um, I mean, she's rising everywhere around the world. Mm -hmm. Uh, a friend told me that uh, <laughs> she saw my hymn books in a Chinese bookstore. I don't think they've been translated into Chinese because the music would be, but maybe, you know, there are a lot of English uh, speaking people there. But, uh, and it's not just mine. It's all of these songs, uh, you know, uh, her church is doing, uh, every single now Saturday and Sunday and uh you're doing and uh so mm -hmm. it, it really is amazing and very hopeful it is and thanks for sharing that yeah one of my questions was going to be what gives you hope right now around the divine feminine and Christianity and maybe that's it but is there anything else you want to say around that well I, I hope that your summit is very widely accepted and i uh i did sign up to sh uh to share that on social media and i will and uh if every participant does that and i know you'll be promoting it more and more and uh the more we can get that out there uh the more that affirmative action churches like her church and the Gathering, a womanish church. Deshay uh, sings my lyrics quite often. And in that, you know, wonderful gospel style that brings in mm -hmm. more people and yeah. more cultures. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I'm very hopeful that she's just going to continue to rise everywhere. And I believe that she is. And the more that we speak that into reality, sing it into reality, paint it into reality, dance it into reality, drum it into reality. Yeah, yeah. I'm just as I'm, I'm I am filled with hope as you're talking, Jan, and it almost feels like um, a reminder that we are part of her rising, and we are, like you said, co-creating earlier you know she needs us to be her voice to be her singing and dancing and painting and drumming and all of the things that we do to bring her presence so thank you for your part in that oh uh, thank you for yours oh my gosh well this has just been so amazing jan how can people stay in touch with you and if people want to order your hymn books how can they do that uh well um i've got a website thank you for asking uh it's just janaldridgeclanton.com, no hyphens in that. And I write a blog uh, uh, as frequently as possible on that. And I, I do have some hymn videos. Uh, of course, I have my books on there. 
I have uh, some sermons and presentations, a lot of free material, and then the YouTube channel. And uh, and New Wineskins now has a channel, and it's called uh, just New Wineskins Ritual Community on YouTube. And so we're recording every uh, service that we do. Great. So. Wow. Uh, yeah. So many. So there are opportunities. Yeah. For... We have to keep in touch. Well, and we will list those below this video. So if you're listening and, you know, you want to see more of Jan's music or you want some of those hymn books for your community, then we have those links um, mm -hmm. available. So Jan, thank you so much for being with us. This has just been gorgeous. Thank you, Kathleen. I've, I've really enjoyed talking with you and appreciate so much what you're doing. Well, right back at you. Blessings on your continued work. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Jan.